Hello crafty cuties! I'm excited to make this journal with you guys today. It's going to have a shaker top on the very cover and I'm excited because I've had this journal in my head for a while. Now I got to say that this paper pack we're going to use today it is perfect for journal making because the pages as you can see are um, landscape. I think that's right. Um, and so you can fold them and they are in the right orientation as um, journals need to be. And so I'm so excited and especially because this page right here is going to be perfect for our shaker top cover. Um, it is by, this is the brand, it's called the Paper Boutique and I have the Butterfly Ballet, but there are different themes and colors and um, you know, different variations of this paper. So yeah, I will have some of the supplies listed down below. So we're gonna start by cutting this down. Let's see, I'm gonna just kind of estimate honestly right now and I'll give you the measurements, but I'm gonna start by cutting this box down. So go ahead and cut away the pieces that you don't need. You can make your journal any size you want. All right, so I did end up trimming mine a little bit smaller than what I had previously said, so I will have to trim my pages a bit, but again, let's keep this simple. So first we are going to start by, I always like to cover my entire um, cover in either fabric, but today I'm just going to keep it so simple. I'm going to use some thin paper, and this is called newspaper, I guess, and I get it in 12 by 18. You can use printer paper if that's what you have, or I typically use muslin, but today I just kind of wanted to keep it, I don't know, I didn't want to be using too many um, products. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put glue over this entire piece here. It's going to go ahead and place this down. This is really thin paper, so it does wrinkle sometimes, but it, it just doesn't really show through on the final um, outcome. So I'm going to trim around and just cut all the way around here. It doesn't have to be straight because we're folding this over. Now we're just going to cut off the corners just almost all the way to the corner of our covers. Let's do that to all four and then we're just going to glue these, the excess over like so. You're just going to add some glue. I'm just doing this kind of messy just because to show you, you can do it really quick. It's, it's really doesn't have to be perfect. And then you just fold over and go ahead and repeat that to all four sides. I am just smoothing this out a bit. So I'm just figuring out the placement and where I'm going to want this to be and what else I want to do with the cover. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to glue this down. So this is basically going to be covering the back cover and then the spine. Um, and then this piece is going to be over here and it's a little smaller than the cover, but I do, I think I'm going to be putting like some trims around it. So I'm just sitting here for way too long figuring out if that's what I want. So I'm just going to go for it and we can add to it. It's really hard to kind of keep it basic and, and not show you guys my thinking process as I go. Um, but I'm also trying to keep it like very simple. So I just glued this piece down. I'm making sure that it's very well glued on the spine area that's going to be getting folded a lot. Before we glue this down, I am going to ink up the edges since it's a little smaller than the cover. I'm using my Distress Oxide and Brush Corduroy. I'm just going to go around all of the edges. Now I'm going to cut out this circle because it's going to be easier to cut this out alone. I'm literally just going to poke my scissors in like this going to trim and I'm actually going to cut where the little antennas are from the butterfly. I'm not going to try to fussy cut around that. So if you don't have a paper like this, go ahead and just cut out whatever shape you want your window to be. I'm trying to do this very careful because this is the cover. I'm going to ink up these edges. Now we are going to place this where we want it and I'm going to take a pencil again and I'm going to trace because we are going to be cutting through cardboard so I want to take my time on this and make sure to get it just right. So now again I'm just going to do the same thing this is thin cardboard so I'm just going to carefully cut out this circle going to once again ink up the edges of this inside window. Now we can go ahead and glue this down to the cover. I'm 
going to carefully place this and line it up with that hole. Now I am going to decorate the front of this, but we're going to come back to that. Now we have that and we are going to take either some vellum or you can use some type of acetate, something that's rather see-through and you're going to back your window. So I'm just going to put glue around. You can use double-sided tape also if that's what you are more familiar or comfortable with. This is not going to show at all. This is just covering our window here. I really like how that looks. I like how the vellum kind of gives it a diffused look. So now it's time for our padded, padded <laughs> foam tape. So we are going to put foam tape in, around the entire frame here, window frame, whatever you want to call it. I have decided to double up on my tape just to make it a little bit thicker because this is pretty thin foam tape. You can also use fun foam if you have that. Um, I've used that for mini shakers and it works just fine as long as you use a strong glue. So again, I'm doubling this up just so we have a little bit more space in our well, I guess you would call it, um, to add different shaker elements. So now is what I think the fun part is. Now, just one little thing. You do, you really have to make sure you don't have any holes in your foam tape, otherwise those little bits can get out easily. So keep that in mind. I'm going to use some glitter here. It's like really thick, whoops, chunky glitter. And you're going to just place it inside this little well. Um, you can use all kinds of different things. I have these little stars. And you have to remember that when your journal is upright, everything's gonna fall to the bottom. So you do wanna keep that in mind to put a right, the right amount of little pieces in here, but you also don't wanna overstuff it. I'm using some micro beads just kind of for sound effects. Um, let's see, and I think I'll just use some more of these iridescent. So now carefully peel back your double-sided tape and you want to have some paper to cover this area up and I'm just going to start by I just have this scrap paper that I am going to place on top to just kind of hold everything in I'm also going to add a little bit of glue because I want this to be on really good this um, tape is really really strong but I just like to be extra careful I don't know why I put some in there so okay so I'm just gonna place this on top and you might want to let this dry if you use wet glue before you flip it over to reveal what you have created. Okay, let's see. There we go. That looks really cool. Now we can go ahead and cover the inside. Um, so I just went ahead and cut out some paper that I had in my stash. And so I'm just going to add some glue and I'm just going to glue these to the inside cover. So you do have to remember that this inside um, cover, it's going to be somewhat dimensional, however thick you made it um, with that foam tape. So keep that in mind. So I am actually going to press my paper down on the top and bottom of the inside covers, just a little side note, um, so that everything is super enclosed. This might be a little harder if you make your shaker super thick, but again, I really didn't make mine too thick. So this is just going to kind of really help hold everything together. I am going to cut some dies out. I'm going to go ahead and use my cuddle bug and cut some dies out here so we can get to decorating the front. So I'm first going to cut out um, some of these flowers because I know that I definitely want to have some floral elements on my cover. And I'm just going to use some of my scrap paper. Um, to do so. I would love to get um, the Tim Holtz die cutting machine because oh my gosh this like takes some muscle but it works it does the job. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the wildflowers and then we can get back to decorating. 
I wanted to add some color to my die cuts, so I'm using these three sprays. And I thought this was going to be a lot easier than trying to use Distress Ink, and it totally was. So I wanted to kind of keep it in the orange family. I was just kind of feeling that. So I'm just spraying these, and then I let them dry. And here I'm going to start decorating my cover. I sped the rest of this video up quite a bit because it just seemed like it was going super slow and there wasn't really anything super important that you guys needed to see. So I am just gluing these die cuts down. I'm kind of just playing around until I get the right placement. Now these die cuts are super thin, hence the name Thin Lips. Um, and if I could have done this part over, I would have either used, there's an adhesive backing that you can use on die cuts. It's kind of like a double sided tape situation. Um, I would have used that or a spray adhesive. That would have been way better because this took me a long time to glue these down, but it's all right. I got it done in the end and I really like how these die cuts, um, look. You're going to see in a future clip that I did decide to add some lace to this cover um, just because the pages were peeking out a bit. So now I'm just going to trim off the bottoms of these die cuts. Now I was going to use some of the floral um, die cuts that I had shown in the beginning on the cover, but it just seemed like it was too much. So I ended up using those on the inside, which you'll see at the um, end here. Now it's time to prep our pages. So I'm just going through and trimming these down a bit. I did need to trim them down to about eight by 11. So I'm just gonna go through and trim all of the pages down. I'm also trimming down anything else that I want to include, like some bags, some glassine bags, and some book pages. I'm keeping this journal extremely simple, you guys are going to see, because I just wanted to have a really simple tutorial for anyone to follow who is kind of overwhelmed by the entire process of journal making. What I'm doing right here is putting all of my different papers and pages into piles. So I have one pile with design paper, one pile with bags, one pile with book pages, and I have three pages that are a heavier cardstock, and that's going to be the cover to each signature. I'm making three groups here, so three signatures, and I am simply dividing up these piles equally into three piles, which again are going to be each of our signatures. The signatures are basically just the pile, the little booklets of paper that we will be folding in half. So here I have my three piles and we are going to go through and fold each of these pages in half. And I did cut a lot of this out because I'm just folding each thing in half and then I'm going to have my three piles of folded pages. And now we will create our signatures by taking the thicker cardstock that I wanted to be the cover of the signature. And then I'm going to just place the pages inside one another. I do like to try and kind of mix the um, pile, or sorry, mix the papers up so that you don't have like two of the same papers next to one of each other. It really doesn't matter. That's just a preference. So I just kind of mix it up. I'll go like scrapbook paper, bag, scrapbook paper, book page. And if you only have scrapbook paper, then that's totally fine too. Arlo's playing right next to me, so you can probably hear her. But a lot of people ask me what to do about some of the pages will stick out and appear to be a little bit longer in your signatures. If that bothers you, you can trim your pages, but it's just bound to happen and it doesn't bother me. Here's where I went ahead and added some lace because my pages were a little bit longer than the cover, but I just kind of improvise and make it work. Now that we are done with the cover and our signatures are ready, I'm going to take some clips just to hold each signature together. You can use paper clips as well. And now it's time to start our binding process. I cut out a scrap piece of paper that's the exact same size as the spine. This is going to be a template. We're gonna fold this in half, and then you're gonna fold the bottom down, or sorry, fold the bottom up to that fold mark. You'll see here in a minute, it's gonna make a lot more sense. Fold the top down to the fold mark. And if you already know how to bind, then you can bind however you want. This is just a really, really simple way. 
I'm taking a permanent marker here just to kind of show you where those fold marks are since it's kind of hard to tell on camera. This is just one of the easiest pamphlet stitches and the easiest way to create a um, template in my mind. I always make sure to write top at the top because it's so easy to mix that around and then your, your binding just doesn't line up right. So we're going to now do the same thing this way. We're going to fold in the middle and then fold each side into that middle fold line. That's because we have three signatures. So this is going to create three lines that are, um, that are even with one another. <laughs> and so now where all of those fold marks line up, you can place a little dot and that's where we will poke the holes for our um, signatures to be sewn into. And if you have four signatures or five, then you can equally um, divide up your binding template into four lines or five lines or two just depending on how many signatures you have. I hope that makes sense. I didn't get much sleep, guys. <laughs> so now where each of those holes are, that is where we will poke a hole. I'm just using my wooden awl here, and I'm just going to poke a hole in each of those circles. And then I use the same template to um, bind, or sorry, to poke the holes into our signatures, which you'll see in just a moment. Just make sure that your hole goes all, or sorry, wow. Just make sure that you poke a hole all the way through the cover. Now you can see everything is ready to go. So now we can fold that template just right in half. And since we did have um, a line in the middle of this template, that works perfect for our signatures. So again, I'm just going to poke a hole in those circles that we drew. And again, you have to make sure that your signature is the right orientation, um, meaning like you want the top of the template to be at the top of your signature. It's really important. Now we have all three of our signatures um, ready to be sewn into our cover because we poked the holes through all of them. There's probably a more technical word, but mama's brain is not working. I am just using some embroidery floss here. It's just super simple. Um, I do really like to use a waxed linen thread. I just don't have any right now. And I love getting mine from paper source. But anyways, I like to go ahead and cut a piece off that is two and a half times the size of um, how tall my signature is. Go ahead and thread your needle. I'm just using a regular needle here. And you're going to poke it through the center hole out through the cover. You're going to go back into the top hole and make sure that you are on the correct um, line of holes there. You go back inside and then you're going to go down to the bottom hole out the cover. And sometimes it can be a little tricky. Just take your time with this and make sure that everything's kind of pulled tight once you have your uh, needle back through the center. And you want to make sure that one of your string ends is on one side of that center and one on the other. And then go ahead and double knot. And again, just make sure that you pull everything really tight so that it's um, so that nothing's going to move around. And then I'm going to just speed this up and show you one more time real quick here. I think a lot of you probably already know how to do a pamphlet stitch, um, but I just wanted it to all be here in one video in case you're new to this or in case you just wanted to see it all together. So again, I'm just sewing through. I go through the center, up to the top, down to the bottom, and then you tie it off. And there we go, guys. You have created a journal. All of our pages are nicely sewn in. I do add some lace to the inner part of, um, there's some cardboard showing, and you could have covered that with scrapbook paper. I just didn't think of it. So I forgot I wanted to add buttons to the spine. You'll see here in this final little flip, I did that and I did it off camera because I thought it would just be way too much for one tutorial and I didn't do anything special. I just sewed through those signatures once again and I laced a button on. 
If that's something you guys really wanted to see, let me know down below because I can just do a really quick tutorial. So now I added a library card to that inner pocket. I added those flower dies because I really wanted to be able to use them. And I added some lace um, just to kind of cover up where the cardboard was. So yeah, this was such a simple journal to make, but I really love the shaker top. And I just wanted to show you guys how easy it was to create um, a pretty simple journal. And even though I didn't decorate any of these pages, it still looks great. And if you want more ideas on decorating journal pages, I have a full tutorial on what I call a fully dressed journal, which you can check out. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.